Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run for the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as it is going to be turning unsettled once again through the weekend as we do start to see westerly winds return. Now as we have alluded to over the past few videos it could be turning exceptionally lively indeed next week as we are now pretty likely seeing the remnants of Hurricane Kirk arriving. Now, in the last sort of 24 hours since our last update, we have seen some changes to that forecast. Still is looking likely to arrive around the middle of next week, but it is looking like it's going to be more for southern areas, which is interesting for much of England and Wales could be impacted. And the latest update for the track of the system is pushing it somewhere between sort of southern England and northern France. Of course, being close to northern France would reduce the wind, reduce the rain. But if it is across southern England, then we could be right uh, in sort of bullseye position to see the worst impacts. The UKV only just about gets to the middle of next week, so we can't quite have a look at the system in full, but we can see the rough track on the UKV. And then we'll have a look at some of the longer range runs, which are all agreeing on this southerly track around that southern England to northern France position with different levels of intensity. But it does look like it could be quite a severe event next week, just about pinpointing now the exact track and the exact intensity. Definitely looks like the it will be hitting somewhere we're going to see impacts now there's very little chance as this veers completely off course and we see nothing um so yeah it does look like it could be very lively next week so do make sure you stay tuned for the second half of the video we'll look at that in a lot of detail so do remember if you enjoy the videos which you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in the description now if you start on the live radar, you can see it is starting to turn unsettled from the west this evening, recording this around half seven on Friday evening, and you can start to see some showers are pushing in from the west. Further southwards and eastwards, well, we've still got remnants of higher pressure. We are still dry, and it has been fairly pleasant today with some spells of sunshine with kind of, sort of middle of the ground, mild temperatures, nothing amazing but nothing really too horrific. But if we put on the temperatures as said this evening, you can see lots of yellows around and it actually will be turning slightly milder through the weekend as we do see Atlantic air moving in. So it is gonna be slightly warmer, temperatures maybe more towards the high teens, but it is gonna be accompanied by thicker cloud and rain. So we're kind of getting those warmer temperatures, but equally losing our, our drier conditions. Now, if you go over to the UKV now and look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days, you can see as we head into Sassay, more heavy rain arrives from the west. It looks really quite severe out in the Atlantic and Irish Sea. But as it progresses eastwards, it does lose its intensity quite quickly through Saturday evening. Much for Saturday, though, for eastern areas, it actually does look pretty dry still. So it's still that high pressure holding on at least a little bit. Before, as we head into Sunday, we do start to see rain for all as it starts to look a little bit more showery. And you can see there's some heavier pulses there through Sunday evening. So again, needs to keep a close eye on that. As we head into Monday, more showers around. Could be drier, though, but still, as I said, a few hefty, thundery showers about. And the same can be said into Tuesday. And then look to our far south as we head into Wednesday. This big wall of rain arriving. Now that does look like it could be the remnants of Kirk. Now because we can't see sort of the big picture, I can't say exactly what that system is. Whether it's another system that develops from the UKV or whether it is Kirk. It kind of lines up with the timings, but since we can't see the exact track, I can't say anything with too much certainty. In that scenario though, you can see that it tracks through northern France. Um, so it is on more on that southerly track than some of the other runs were showing. Again, we'll have to wait and see exactly how it does play out. But uh, interesting nonetheless. Uh, I think in the next day or two, we'll have some pretty accurate and high resolution models starting to show the exact track of this system. We'll be able to get lots better assertions on what it will be doing. Because at the moment, we can only really properly rely on those longer range runs. Now, if you look at the temperatures, as I said, it's going to be actually pretty mild over the weekend. Temperatures here into the mid to high teens through Saturday afternoon, and that's because we've got that milder air pushing in. But of course, it is going to be accompanied with cloud and rain. But Saturday in the east doesn't look too bad. Mid teens and temperatures uh, as are and dry conditions. 
into Sunday, it's a similar story. Temperatures again into the mid to high teens where it's dry, low teens where it is wet or even single digits over the higher ground. And the same can sit for Monday. More widely though, mid to high teens there, again with that slightly muggier air pushing in. And into Tuesday, could even see an 18 or 19. Again, showers around, so it's not going to be warm and dry everywhere. But in some isolated spots, it does look like it'll be pretty decent indeed. And then finally into Wednesday, again, mix of temperatures. But you can see some very cold conditions just to our north. And that's the cold air that's likely to push in once these lows towards the south, including the remnants of Kirk, does clear. Now, I do go on to, uh, want to go over to that chart I was showing yesterday, which was the thumbnail showing the track of Kirk from the various GFS ensembles. Now, you can see here it has shifted a little bit further south, which is uh, more in line with the ECM that we was showing, interestingly. And you see it does roughly get out to day five of the system just out in, uh, in the North Atlantic towards the Bay of Biscay. So you can see the mean track is pushing it basically through the English Channel. But the one thing that has changed that's a little bit worrying is the colour of those lines. As I said, the colour indicates the strength of the winds, and you see where it's darker reds and pinks, that is hurricane force winds. It's going to remain like that until it eventually clears the Azores in around three to four days time. As it gets towards 120, 144, 168 hours when it slowly arrives towards northern Europe, you can see it does go green, but then some runs have it going orange once again, which indicates that it actually could strengthen on arrival or at least not lose as much strength as it, as it has been previously forecasted to. So a lot more green and blue runs yesterday, a lot fewer of those in this latest output. Again, it could just be one ensemble run uh, and uh, overblowing it a little bit. But here showing max winds of 60, 70 knots, that could be pretty disruptive indeed. That's looking at 80, 90 mile per hour winds. So again, we'll have to wait and see exactly how it does play out. And we'll have to pinpoint the track first and looking at where the strongest winds will be as there most likely will be very strong winds around the core of the storm. And then of course, it slowly degrades away as we get further apart. But anyway, you can see suddenly shift uh, and slightly higher intensity today and if we do shift over and have a look at some of the ecmwf runs uh unfortunately again it's still a little bit early still has the system 120 hours well out in the atlantic still so unfortunately we can't look at its exact track but again looks very similar you kind of see it's just clearing the north of portugal and spain most likely heading towards the english channel and northern france now, if we do show the GFS operational run now, we're expecting it to be fairly similar to those ensemble runs. You can see unsettled over the coming days with a big area of low pressure, but it kind of sits out in the Atlantic. You can see the remnants of Kirk here into the North Atlantic, getting picked up by the jet stream and heading our way, arriving through Wednesday into Thursday. And you can see it takes a track across southern England, pretty much directly from southwest England through Cornwall, and then clearing East Anglia through Wednesday afternoon into the evening. Now, if you look at a little bit deeper, you can see the centre of the system gets down to 960 mill 66 millibars, and you can see that it actually is keeping its strength, if not deepening slightly, as it clears. So that could cause even more severe impacts because deepening systems, strengthening systems, can always bring slightly stronger gusts than initially forecasted. And if we do have a look at those max wind gusts, you can see wind gusts, we're looking widely at sort of 60, 70, 80 kilometers per hour. So that's 40, 50, 60 miles per hour, looking up to about around 100 to so maybe 110 kilometers per hour wind gusts there on its southeastern flank. Again, that's looking around the 70 or 80 mile per hour point. So again, we'll have to wait and see how it does play out. But yeah, pretty severe, I must say, from the runs today. Um, and yeah, we'll have to wait and see its exact track and intensities. I would expect slightly stronger winds on its northern edge than we're actually seeing forecasted here. Uh, again, though, we'll wait for those high resolution runs to show it. But you can see the track here is fairly in line what we were seeing from the other ensembles tracking straight through southern England for eventually clearing and you can see as it does clear we do see some pretty strong northerly winds arriving on the back edge 
and actually start to see some very cold air arriving from the north and it would turn actually pretty cold indeed the minus five isotherm moving in and the zero degree isotherm for all beyond that though we turn to a more of a westerly regime still low pressure systems coming in off the atlantic but nowhere near as unsettled as it has been recently or as it's going to be next week and actually a bit of high pressure there 384 hours so actually not too bad after it's not opening the door for a massive atlantic onslaught but it is uh, giving a brief period next week, maybe two or three days, some pretty horrible conditions. Again, need to pinpoint those details as we head through the weekend. Do compare to the GM, uh, again, low pressure dominating through early next week. Kirk arriving, getting picked up by the jet stream and heading through there, uh, basically straight through the channel, it looks like. If we do zoom in and have a look at it in a slightly higher resolution, you can see um, that it basically heads straight through the channel and northern France. Again, not quite as deep as the GFS, about 978 millibars here. And you see the strongest winds will probably be on its western flank here. If we put on those winds, you can see on that western flank, more likely for northern France, but equally for southeast England as well, some exceptionally strong winds. Again, slight nudge northwards, that can impact more widely southern and east England, slight first nudge southwards, be more northern France. So that's these are sort of margins we're playing with at the moment. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see for that. But yeah, very strong indeed. And you see those. Sustained winds are looking around the 40 to 50 knots. The sustained, that's looking around 60 or 70 miles per hour. So that is pretty extreme. Uh, and again, would likely have yellow or even amber warnings issued wherever that back edge does form. If we move beyond that uh, and have a look at the following days, northerly winds push in and then eventually we go more atlantic based but a pretty flat westerly. So if we're being honest, it doesn't actually look too bad once again as we head towards day 10. If you compare finally to the ECMWF ensembles, again unsettled over the coming hours, eventually Kirk arrives. Fortunately, we can only have a look at the 24 hour intervals, but you can see it does follow a similar track through the channel, northern France, southern England, that sort of region, clearing, northerly winds arrive, and then it goes from more of a westerly flow towards day 10. Now, if you finish by looking at the latest ensembles, you can see a real distinct sort of appearance of these ensemble now for the remnants of Kirk. Fairly stationary upper air temperatures over the next three or four days. And then we see a brief uptick in those upper air temperatures, combining with a massive, humongous spike in precipitation now. Majority of ensemble members up towards half an inch to an inch of rainfall, some even more than that. That's pretty ridiculous for ensembles. So definitely lining up a pretty uh, impactful event and you can see on the uh, sort of subsequent days upper air temperatures drop massively and that's that northerly wind arriving to around five to eight degrees below average before recovering later through next weekend into the following week back towards average and precipitation down again so you can really see this distinct period of a few days here where it goes very cold with massive precipitation initially and that's all due to the remnants of kirk Another big factor is the mean sea level pressure. Hovering around the 1,000 to 1,020 millibars, again, kind of hovering between high pressure, low pressure. But you can see a distinct drop there as we head towards the 10th of October in around five and a half to six days time. That is when the center of Kirk could arrive. And you see the mean sea level pressure through Wednesday evening now dropping towards 975 millibars for an average. It was 985 yesterday. So quite a big shift. And you see substantial number of ensemble members there uh, going down into the 960s, which is pretty deep indeed. Not record breaking or anything like that, but definitely notable system. Um, and again, these are looking at six hour intervals. It could drop even lower in the subsequent hours before the next forecasting period. So yeah, very interesting indeed. The GFS is definitely concentrating now uh, and definitely sort of the pick up on this system and starting to see some proper agreement between the ensembles. If you look at the ECMWF just to finish, again, you can see that big spike in precipitation starting to appear and big drop, pretty much exactly the same as the GFS, really no massive distinction. And if we do look at the sea level pressure, again, quite a big drop, not quite as much, more towards the 985. So definitely a drop from yesterday, but not as much. And I do think that is because still quite a few ECMWF ensembles have the track slightly further southwards. Uh, it is going to be one of those where we either the ECMWF is right or the GFS is right. Uh, or they kind of come together and kind of uh, agree in the middle. But 
definitely showing a little bit more of a southerly track. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it could be the difference between amber warning and yellow warning, for example. But you can see definitely quite a distinct drop there for next Wednesday evening. And also, one thing I have not shown is the pickup in winds. You can see again a distinct cluster on much higher wind speeds around that portion. And it's shown even further on the GFS here with wind speeds exceptionally strong in around six days' time, doubling or even tripling compared to what we have at the moment. So, yeah, could be pretty lively indeed. Uh, again, we'll have to keep a very close eye on it. We've been talking about this for a number of days, but we're starting to get into the time frame where we can actually put some proper detail on this system. And hopefully over the weekend, we'll be able to have some pretty, pretty clear answers and a pretty clear forecast on what is going to be happening as we head into the middle of next week. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.